Welcome to Digital Champions TV, where we speak with the top leaders and trendsetters in advertising and marketing. I'm Greg Kirkham, and today we're joined by Brian J. Esposito, the CEO and founder of Esposito Intellectual Enterprises and Diamond Lake Minerals, Inc., uh, based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome, Brian. Uh, thank you, Greg. Pleasure to be here. Now, Brian, you began your journey as an entrepreneur at a young age. Now, I've got to learn more. Uh, you started off implementing and distributing your own media campaigns within your holdings. How did this early experience shape your approach to marketing and the growth of Esposito into intellectual enterprises in Diamond Lake? Yeah, always, uh, always learn at an early age how to connect with an audience, right? And no matter what mediums that are there to be able to create that messaging and distribute that messaging. So early on in my career in the late 90s, I was the first to launch a beauty supply company that was based out of um, Asbury Park, Belmar, New Jersey area, and was the first of its kind to create an e-commerce platform for the beauty industry. So through that, there was all the traditional media campaigns that you would do when rolling out and launching a company such as uh, television, print, radio, uh, subways, bus stops, billboards. But also during that time, you saw the, the tremendous, uh, huge push in banner ads and things like when Google AdWords came out on, you know, pr creating campaigns that were, you know, could have been very expensive on certain target keywords that were um, selected for whatever the consumer was looking for in the moment. So we were the first to do all that with the beauty industry. I launched over 1,200 brands with that. So through that business, I got run through the school of hard knocks on making sure that whatever we create, the content we create, the messaging, the media that we create, that we're very streamlined in the costs associated with that because at the end outcome, we got to make sure we're profitable in whatever we're selling. And then being very smart on the budget for pushing that media or pushing that content out through all those different distribution channels. So yeah, you mentioned that reasonable costs and adapting to new mediums in Web3 as some of the biggest challenges in marketing. Um, how do you see these challenges impacting the industry and what strategies are you using to really get around them or mitigate them? Yeah, it's key that you identify the right talent in-house that understands that medium and that audience and how to communicate with it. I often reference this push in Web3 or digital assets, which we're very heavily in. You know, it's a different breed of an audience. So back when social media was rolling out and you had all these different social media platforms that started rolling out, it, companies tend to use their current marketing team or their chief marketing officer to implement a strategy into a new medium and it doesn't always work that way because it's a completely different style, a different approach, different engagement, different uh, repetition to further get that customer or potential customer to engage back and hopefully be do some sort of transaction. So right now the biggest challenge is a lot of these companies are pushing out Web3 metaverse related campaigns but they don't understand that that audience is extremely different and can do their brand or their company harm in the real world if they're not properly implementing the right strategies the right support and the right messaging and what is the right reward or utility that that web3 user is getting by interacting with a brand and how does that loop back into real life commerce and real life business so it goes to show that even if you have the perfect uh, product you've got the perfect offering if you end up serving that offering on the wrong platform or to a completely different audience, it's most likely going to be a miss anyway, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it, and it gets lost in uh, all the expenses that you utilize to push out that messaging or that offering. So if you don't do it correctly, not only do you miss potentially capturing a sale or capturing a new customer or some sort of data that you wish to monetize somehow, hopefully ethically and correctly, um, you, you tend to also probably upset that audience because it's not being used correctly. So then now the brand's associated with maybe some gimmick that they're not really a Web3 company because the Web3 audience, if we're still speaking about that medium, they're, they're very sophisticated in what they expect and what they demand out of a brand or out of their time or out of engaging with some sort of digital asset or some sort of NFT or token, for example, or 
how are they going to get some reward back for engagement? And if you offend them because you think you can just make an announcement that you're a Web3 company now, but none of your technology is Web3, none of your mediums are Web3, and that sophisticated audience that knows what to look for is going to be like, oh, they're just trying to exploit either data or they're trying to exploit money out of me. And that's where it, it can ha have a very negative impact on a movement going against the brand, which I've, I've, I've preached to a lot of brands. Hey, if you're not fully ready to go into this new medium with the right in-house team, the right education, the right understanding, understanding digital wallets, everything that entails Web3, then just don't do it. Don't go out and do a news mm -hmm. announcement that says you're in Web3 because you partnered with a credit card processor that can take some sort of token for payment. That doesn't make you a Web3 focused company. That makes you utilizing a, an interesting medium for financial mechanisms for transacting. That's cool. Great. Say that's what you are, but you're not a Web3 focused company. And that's where brands can get in trouble if they're not fully transparent. Because again, the whole idea of Web3 uh, and this uh, blockchain uh, movement that we're happening is full transparency. It's knowing proof of ownership. It's seeing how assets move from one wallet to another and proof of authenticity. So Brands just have to be very careful. They can't just a big brand can't just make an announcement and, and, and think it's going to be successful if they're not very smart about it and have the right internal team that understands that audience. Yeah, absolutely. The positioning, uh, both in the brand as well as the messaging and the audience, are so incredibly crucial. Uh, thank you, Brian, for sharing your expertise and uh, thank you, Brian, for sharing your expertise and perspectives with us today. To connect with Brian. And learn more about his work, visit digitalchampionstv.com. We're working with agencies to be able to scale them and grow them and provide them services that would cost them way more than it would uh, for them to do it themselves. As, as an agency owner, you need the support of other people to really be able to serve your clients better and be able to provide them with services that they're going to not only want to purchase for the first time, but they're going to want to continue purchasing over the long haul. So it includes anything from video production all the way to web design, SEO, video content, and then also uh, lead generation, social media, the works. What we do is we take a, a hands-on approach with our clientele to be able to help help you be successful, help you grow, help you really dial in who you are as an agency, and help you focus more on those core values that you want within your business. We're not just a, you know, a white label agency, we're a consultancy. And because we have scaled multiple agencies, uh, <laughs> we've worked with hundreds of clients, we know what it takes to be able to, to grow the business.